Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right, let's bow our heads so that we can pray. Our great God in heaven, we appreciate you again for the privilege of coming to you. Particularly, we want to thank you for our salvation, for saving us. We are grateful for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary Tree in order to reconcile us to you. We are also thankful for the privilege of being in your house to worship and then to also listen to something that can help us the next time we want to engage in praying. We are therefore praying that God, you will bless us. Speak to our heart. Open our eyes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. People of God, we can have a seat. We are looking at an important subject. It is the subject of fasting and praying. It is not a subject that is strange in this assembly. In this church, we do the business of fasting. I also pray. And I know fasting is common. Various people at various times, they fast, they pray. In Christendom generally, people fast and pray. Even though not everybody engage in this exercise, but at least it is common to note that people fast, people pray. If I ask us if you have ever fasted, I'm sure everybody here present will say, at one time or the other, I have fasted. But this morning, we are looking at this important subject. Number one, to let us know that fasting is a spiritual exercise. That's number one. The fasting is not a carnal program. It's a spiritual exercise. So, we want everybody to understand that. Two, we also want to deepen our understanding about the subject of fasting. Because we have seen fasting being carried out by people with bad objectives, with ulterior motives, with perhaps wicked intentions. But we are going to look at what the Bible says or what God teaches us about fasting. So number two is to deepen our understanding of this subject that is called fasting. Number three, we want to let everybody know, if you are a child of God, you are a Christian, that fasting is not optional. It is not, if I like, I fast. If I don't like, I will not fast. And nobody can force me. In fact, there are some people that will tell you, look, look, look. This thing, Jesus has paid the price. I don't need to do anything. All this one that you are just troubling yourself. You are just wasting your time. Jesus has paid it all. No fasting. It's a lie. Brother, sister, fasting was even instructed to be carried out by our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is to let you know that it's not optional. Fasting is not optional. Okay? Then number four, we are teaching this subject uh, for the benefit of those people who perhaps have joined this church and from your background where you are coming from you are not used to fasting you are not uh, used to engaging in that or there was no teaching as regarding fasting so we will need to show you from scripture that this thing is real and this thing is very very true and then number five we are teaching this subject to let you see the huge benefit, the great benefit derivable in fasting. Fasting has a lot of benefits. So we are going to show you in the course of this teaching. I know at one time or the other you have engaged in this fasting as an individual person. But did you get result from that fasting? When you fasted, did God meet that need? Did God help you 
to receive that solution to what you are asking for or looking for or to solve the problem you are looking for. Today, we are looking at fasting and I want you to brace up and follow us as we look at the scriptures together. Was fasting taught in the Bible? Who instituted fasting? Why should I fast? Are there any benefits and gains in fasting? Are we still supposed to fast today? All these things are the questions that you need to get answers to. So that when you get out there, you are not confused. Individual person, can we fast? As a family, do you fast? As a church, must we fast? You see, in our time, fasting has become a religious exercise. So like as I listened in the Bible class, the teacher was saying, it's not like competition. Some churches, 21 days. Others, 30 days. Another one, 40 days. Some other persons, 50 days. Another church, 70 days. And so on. Okay? Let us understand that all this number of days instituted by denominations and churches, there is no direct teaching commanding that these are the number of days that we must use in observing fasting. I know during the Lent season, when Christian body as a whole, they go into fasting, is 40 days. Am I correct? But there is no place or passage of the Bible that teaches that we must go through 40 days annually or every year. So when a church decides, let's dedicate 30 days for fasting, 70 days for fasting, they are doing that as being led by the Spirit of God in that local assembly. So you are not going to contest it or condemn it. No. If in your own assembly is 21 days, praise God for you. Another assembly is 50 days, praise God for them. Hallelujah. So there is no competition. Okay. What God will do, He will do, even with the fasting of one day. Am I correct? Yes, but you need to understand the ramifications of fastings. You need to know the importance, the significance of fasting. You need to be taught the principles or the precepts as contained in the Bible of fasting. You need to know the benefits of fasting. And that is what we are looking at today. We have been told that fasting is not I did not eat and so I have fasted. No. We have been told that fasting is I am so busy and I didn't eat that day till the evening time. So I conclude I have fasted. No sir, no ma, you have not fasted. It's just that you were too busy and you didn't have time to eat. I don't have food to eat in the house. And so I did not eat that day till the evening when I eventually I got food. For that reason, I have fasted. Hello, Siloma. No, you didn't fast. It's just that you didn't have food to eat. Okay? What makes fasting fasting is what you should understand. We call them the acceptable ingredient or the essentials of fasting. In other words, there should be there should be some components in that your I didn't have food to eat. I made it fast. There should be some components, some essentials, some items added to that. I didn't have food to eat. I didn't eat, so I fasted. There must be some component that will now make that thing to be fast. Or I was so busy from morning to the evening time, then eventually I ate. There should be some components some essentials inside that I was so busy that can help you to convert it to fasting. Someone say I hear. So that is the reason why we are looking at this important subject. So when you understand it, you will not fast in the wrong way. I have seen people on the day that they even decided that they are fasting. They decided they are fasting. And they, they denied themselves of food. They did not eat food. Okay? But they were so busy with their own personal business. They were so busy with activities. 
they were so busy that till they returned back from work or from school they never had time to commune with god and when eventually they got home maybe that evening they rushed to quickly pick that food and blasted it and then they mark it in their calendar today they won i have fasted elusa you didn't fast too because there must be component inside that fast that should make it a fasting that's why we are looking at those essentials of fasting but before i look at these essentials of fasting because this is just a preamble to this subject it's just an introduction before i look at these essentials of fasting what is fast or fasting whether you call it fast or fasting is the same thing praise god so whether you say praying and fasting or prayer and fast you are saying the same thing so anyone you choose to use is correct so what is fast or what is fasting i want to take you through scripture to see what fast or fasting is so that you don't argue praise god are you ready let's look at the first scripture in the book of luke okay let's look at matthew chapter 4 in the book of matthew matthew gospel chapter 4 i'm reading verse 2 chapter 4 verse 2 hear this and when he jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward and on guard he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the bible says he was afterward and on guard luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 verse 2 being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were handed he afterward on guard i am not taking this teaching as a bible study though but let me just quickly make a remark okay did you see with the, in these two scriptures that we have just read that the bible didn't tell us that jesus christ was thirsty the bible didn't tell us that he was thirsty the bible didn't tell us that he did not drink that's what he did not eat if you have been fasting for 40 days and you did not drink water for 40 days what should be the recommended thing you should take first eh? what it should be water preferably warm water preferably okay you have been fasting for a long time but the bible didn't tell us he actually needed water but the bible tells us he needed food is that correct both matthew chapter 4 and luke chapter 4 they say the same thing now if you look at the book of second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 i'm reading here from verse 3 giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of god in much patience in afflictions in necessities in distresses in stripes in imprisonment in tumult in labors in watchings and what fastings he said this is how we conduct ourselves how you recognize so that we are children of god this is a list go to that list you see the list and then begin to ask yourself do you do, you do these things are you patient somebody really has offended you are you patient to get that problem solved in a christian way even in the days of affliction maybe you don't know because there are some people that teach you once you are born again no more problem again it's a lie it is in fact it is even when you are born again that the devil rises up more fiercely against you and he can test you in every area he can test your spiritual life he can test your body test you very well 
send arrows of sicknesses and not the like affect your business he did it to job job had everything but one day satan crashed everything so that you are a child of god doesn't mean that you are immune against temptation it doesn't mean that you are immune against affliction and attack it doesn't mean that you are immune against certain mishaps it doesn't mean so if god allows it it is for a purpose that is why we ask for grace all the time that's why we pray for grace we wake up in the morning you ask for grace god see me through this day take me through this day i need your grace to move i need your grace to act i need even your grace to talk hallelujah so when you look at that scripture you see paul the apostle talk about fasting and he said fasting is plenty times so if you have not been fasting why are you not fasting if you if you are maybe you are coming from a background a school of thought where they don't teach fasting it's okay but now that you have entered here we will teach you by the word of god that fasting is important fasting is essential fasting is needful fasting should be practiced if you are a child of god parent in the house do you have days in the week where you bring your family in fasting including your children your children should know on a day like this we fast in our family there are parents that think that they love their children too much they love them above god so they do not want that child to go without food in the morning to school it's a tradition in our family we have the day in the week you don't eat go to wherever that you are going to you come back you eat somebody say amen and we are used to it so you must learn how to fast and you must teach your children how to fast you must teach them so please look at the book of second corinthians also chapter 11 second corinthians chapter 11 and then we are looking at verse 20 6 and verse 27 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 in journeys often in Paris of waters in Paris of robbers in Paris by my own countrymen in Paris by the heathen in Paris in the city in Paris in the wilderness in Paris in the sea in Paris among false brethren in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness somebody hear me why would this aged paul the apostle separate hunger and thirst from fasting in the same verse because if you are not told this you will group you will group hunger and thirst as fasting but Paul the Apostle is saying, no, there are different things. Look at that verse 27, towards the last. He said, in hunger and thirst, comma, in fastings often. He was giving a list of what was happening to his life or what has happened to him. He was giving a list. And then he now got to this point. He said, there were times I was very hungry. I didn't have food to eat. But that was not fasting and there were times i had food to eat but i decided not to eat because i was fasting and it is not once in a while he said often i fasted and then you are telling yourself i don't know why these days god doesn't answer prayer do you do what these people do because you're asking why is it that those people of those times when they pray god answered their prayer speed speedily they did that because they knew how to position themselves to the point that God can hear them and answer their prayer. I will be telling you in this course of teaching and series that fasting really do not bring answer to prayer. No. But rather, fasting creates the condition. Fasting gives you the enabling environment. Fasting gives you the atmosphere under which your prayer can be answered easily. That's what fasting does. So when you spike your prayer with fasting, what you are doing there is that you are trying to get into a situation, into a condition in which you can cut straight into the realm of the spirit. You can have what you call the cutting edge 
when you are praying. That's what fasting does. Fasting makes you lighter in the spirit that the Holy Spirit can carry you. You know, when you spend time, you eat, 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 you become so dense, so heavy, that even for the Holy Ghost to carry you, it's a difficult issue. You eat too much. You eat too much. And after you have eaten, eaten so well, to fast becomes difficult. It is you that will say, ah, me, I don't know how to fast too. Some people have grace to fast. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everybody has the grace to fast. It's, your, it's for you to apply it. That food will not run away. And look at how the devil deceives people. They say they don't know how to fast. So they don't fast. Especially women. But on Saturday, they can walk. They start their walking since early hours of the morning. As they are washing cloth, they will clean the house, they will go to the market, they will cook the food. Before they will eat that day, around 2 p.m., 3 p.m., that very day, Saturday. But if you ask that same woman, fast on Saturday till 2 p.m., I, I don't know how to fast, though. How did you stay without eating till 3 p.m. on Saturday? How? You see how the devil deceives people? But that's also an indication that fasting is a spiritual program. When you decide not to eat because you are working, domestic work at home, okay, Satan will not disturb you because you know that that one will not affect him. It will not affect his government. It will not affect his operation around you, in your family. So Satan will not disturb you. But you just declare and say, on Saturday, this Saturday, I am going to fast till 2 p.m. It's even before you wake up that morning, Satan will have been drumming it in your ears that you are very hungry. That ah, you are very hungry. You remember last night you did not eat well. And you want to fast. Can't you push that fasting to some other time? And then you yourself also you'll be reasoning. Meanwhile, your belly is turning, is biting you. And Satan is saying, ah, eat now. Because if you don't eat now, sure you know they see that there's something called ulcer. Ulcer can catch you. And you yourself also you are listening to the suggestions and the discussion of Satan. That is what he did to Eve in the garden. As God said, that you not eat any of this fruit in the garden. Is that what God told you? And because Eve didn't know, she began to engage the devil in conversation. So why don't you on the day that the devil comes that way, like he came to Eve, that ah, you mean you want to fast today? Why don't you shift it? Tomorrow you can do it. Tomorrow you can do it. And the devil knows that if you shift it, you have been able to tell God that, look, you are not serious. It is high time you tell that devil, shut up. Today is my fast and I'm not going to change. It's high time you tell that devil. And when you do that, he will go for a while, he will come back again around 10 a.m. in the morning. See, Shiba, I told you, see, the belly is still biting you. That, don't you think that you can eat? Even if I told you something small like biscuits, you can take it. And then you shun the devil leave. By 11 o'clock, you come back again. You say, ha, you are punishing yourself. Oh. You soon fall down and faint. And maybe as he's talking, your, your eyes just turn a little. You say, I told you. You are about to faint now. And the next you look for bread. The next you look for God, you want to soak. He said, before I fall down and collapse here, this thing is a reasoning from the inside of me. I have intelligence, I'm wise. I cannot continue. If I faint now, they will say I was a foolish person. You now go and carry food, begin to eat. It is the devil that suggested it's your mind. But the moment you make up your mind and say, no, devil, I will finish this thing. It will leave you. And that day when you pray, you see the result. Hallelujah. Let me share my personal experience with you. Some time ago, where I was walking, I had set a time I wanted to go on fasting for one week. For one week, one full week. And I set it a while that on so 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 time, I mark it in the calendar, I will be on fasting for one week. But me, I didn't know that as the devil will have it, not God. Because the company decided to send me on a course for that one week. And it was one of the biggest hotels in this city, Lagos. And it's the course started the day I was supposed to start my fast. So we all arrived at the hotel. They check us in. After which they call everybody to come to the classroom. 
and we all go to the classroom beautiful environment before we can even start the class at all they give is your choice it's different type of tea coffee beverage lipton different types of tea sea milk your choice just go and take it the way you want praise god me was supposed to fast that very day anyone you want to use you can use snacks you can use bread and the bread is not the agege bread the kind of bread that when you see yourself you know ah this one should not pass me boku is not even sweet correct bread somebody say amen when you come to this type of thing ha bread that when you peel like this you will see different you will see jam you see different thing that you look and say ah ah i must have missed this so every other person they were enjoying themselves they were eating those things when we finish all of us are in the same class and then they put some other little things in front of people like sweets chocolate sweets all those bit so as they are taking lecture they are licking and i'm supposed to fast on that day ha ah, god what is happening praise god i even endure that one after about 2 hours they said we should go for a short break they went for a short break they were eating no dishi dishi i was still fasting after 2 hours after about 10 minutes we will return back or 20 minutes we return back go we'll return back we we'll continue that it was marathon now i was becoming tired and hungry now these people they were very very sharp they were doing asking question in class they were doing asking question me i was already getting tired because it was a serious lecture after that we now went for a long break we are done long break to return back in one hour time now we now enter the main place where they put the main food swallow spoon in spoon inspired food understand they put all those in there come and see chicken where you're looking at me like this hallelujah <laughs> and my colleagues those that knew that I wasn't eating they had earlier come to say are you not taking something and said i am okay so they believe that this time around this man you must got you are hungry ah i look at this thing like this come and see my colleague the one i want to take pandenya was taking fufu was taking eba was taking rice was taking different type of fry country food and all and intercontinental food everything was just there they were just eating i was asking myself god can't i shift this fasting to next week <laughs> praise god say ah, can't i shift this thing because this is going to last for a whole one week up. but i can say fast that next week It's still one week too. Ah, God. God didn't answer me. And I said, I endured that the one. We finished in the evening. We went back to go and rest. I broke my fast in the evening. I was just thinking, tomorrow I'll continue this circle like this again. God. God. Can't I shift this thing to next week? I didn't get any answer from God. So since I didn't get any answer from God, I now ask for grace. Paul the apostle said he prayed to God. He said God remove this infirmity. God kept telling him my grace is sufficient for thee. So I now I now ask for grace. God give me grace that when they are chewing all these things, I will not be moved. I pray to God and thank God I didn't fail God throughout that week. I missed those food. I didn't even remember to tell that there was a time that the thought came to my mind that your company have already paid for this you know. You are wasting the company's money because they paid for you too to also enjoy this thing. But I denied it. And I finished it that week, that Friday. And I got back I was celebrating victory. I said God, you helped me. So I know what it is to be tempted by the devil not to fast. So look at him and say, neighbor fasting is important say neighbor fasting is spiritual so what then is fasting let's look at what fasting is that word fast from the original greek word say you know that the new testament was written in greek so the original greek word for that word fast is nestove that's the greek word You see you must get it from the context of the word that was used in translating it to fast. That is the reason why they will not make mistake to think hunger and thirst is fasting. No. 
and it was used very well. So Paul the Apostle could say, in hunger, in thirst, then in fastings many times, often. It's because that word fast is from that Greek word nestove. And that nestove is a composite word. N-E Ne and the remaining is H2. They bring it together to form Nestove. That N-E is the word in Greek that you used to negate a word. And that word is not. Not. H2 is it. Bring it together. Nestove means not to eat. That's the word, not to eat. So in other words, essentially in the New Testament, fasting was actually referring to the fact that you are not eating. And when you are not eating, there comes the essentials I'm going to talk to you very briefly before we pray. The component that you must put in, I am not eating this morning, this afternoon. Now, what will I add to that I'm not eating to make it fast? So let's first and foremost establish the fact that not to eat is fasting. So look at the Bible in the book of um, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter nine. Write it down. Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse nine and verse eighteen. I'm going to read one of them. One of these scriptures I'm going to read. Deuteronomy chapter ten also. I mean Daniel chapter ten, verse two to verse 3 okay now also put this down John chapter 4 verse 6 to verse 8 and then in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 4 to verse 5 which we have read before so put them down put them down now this is the scripture that we are going to read Matthew chapter 15 verse 32 Matthew chapter 15 verse 32 we we'll read this then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said I have compassion on the multitude why because they continue with me now three days how many days three days and have nothing to what to eat they continued with me please note this and they continued with me how many days three days and had what nothing to eat he didn't say they didn't have anything to drink oh. say but they didn't have anything to eat listen and i will not send them away what fasting lest they faint in the way in other words they didn't have something to eat but they were fasting and jesus Christ recognized they were fasting why is this so they were fasting because they were with him that's one essential component i'm going to give you the, the component now but begins to note he said they were with me three days not eating anything it means that in the days when you are fasting you should be able to create a time to be with god when you are fasting so it is not i left in the morning i did not eat i went to work i did not eat i went to my business i did not eat i went to school i did not eat and now i have come back i should eat and break my fast you didn't fast if you are to fast you should have been with Jesus and that would take prayer that would take the word of God being served you open to scripture you read you spend time with him so when they were with Jesus Christ they were not doing fun fair they were listening to the word of God and they had time to pray he said they have been with me these three days I can't send them away like that if I send them away like that fasting they can faint on the road. It's, it's important that Jesus Christ recognized the role of food in the life of a man. And if you don't eat, you can faint. Hallelujah. If you are not convinced, then look at Mark chapter 8. The book of Mark chapter 8. 
and see how Jesus Christ tells us about this fast. Mark chapter 8 from verse 1. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, I told you. You are not seeing nothing to drink here. Nothing to eat. Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude. Why? Because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way. For divers of them came from far. So you see again, Jesus was saying that not to eat is fast, but provided they are with me, then I'm fasting. So, fasting therefore is abstinence or abstinence from food or pleasure of any kind for a period longer than necessary in order to be with God, in order to be in fellowship with Him, in order to set yourself apart to pray to fellowship that what fasting is when I say longer than necessary I mean longer than your normal time of eating maybe before now you are the type that your breakfast you can't stay beyond 8 o'clock 10 o'clock you have taken your breakfast when you are fasting you are not going to take that breakfast you deny yourself of it then you are looking at breaking the fast in the afternoon in the evening time so that's what it means longer than the normal time that what fasting is praise God that was fasting is so the essentials of fasting the things that must be inside your fast to make it a fast and not a hunger strike and not that you are hungry you do not have food to eat what will make it fast is number one purpose of fasting why are you fasting what's your reason for fasting why should you fast what's the thing that is making you to fast purpose you must have a defined purpose and that purpose hear me clearly must be an acceptable purpose to God before you can call that a fast do you remember Esther when Esther had been faced with naked truth and Mordecai the uncle had told Esther and said Esther if you think my problem is cloth and food away with that we have more serious business at the hour a sentence has been passed signed by the king your husband that they should exterminate every one of us that are Jews including you unknown to you he says so I am sending a message to tell you go to your, your husband now and tell him that thing is signed is not correct you should reverse it and the law of the Medes and the Persians is one the king has signed he has signed and then again during that season the king was having a seclusion for 30 days and during that 30 days the king wasn't see anybody except he wants you to see him he will send for you if you if you on or ill advisedly walk into the king without being sent for you are gone that was the law so it was a delicate situation at that time and yet Mordecai the uncle was telling Esther go and meet him and when Esther heard that, she knew that that kind of a thing, it would take fasting. So she sent back a message to Mordecai. He said, you people should organize fasting for me for three days. Myself and my maidens will also do the same thing. We will not eat, we will not drink, dry fasting for three days. Then after this fasting, I will walk up to the king and present myself. Praise God. Then she handled it by saying, if I perish, I perish. I don't care. But let me fast. You know what? Esther recognized the fact that, look, fasting is a spiritual exercise. What I may not be able to effect physically, I can turn the knob in the realm of the spirit. And for me to be able to turn it, I must be in the position. I must be in the atmosphere. I must be in that environment that can grant me access to turning that knob. And that atmosphere is the atmosphere of fasting. Is somebody blessed? That's fasting. 
And when she did that, she went into the king contrary to existing law. And she found favor. You see how favor greeted her. So somebody, you are going to fast afterwards from this hour. And fast and favor will follow you. Amen. Whatsoever has been denied you of, your fasting will open that door. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. That's what fasting does. That's what fasting does. So, but there was a purpose. The purpose was that so that the king can do something to the law he assigned. That was the purpose. There must be a purpose that is accepted by God. And that purpose was accepted by God because you can't exterminate the Jews. God's covenant with Abraham cannot be broken. You can't. But God must look for somebody. And God will find an Esther. So I pray for somebody here. God will find you in that family. God will use you in that household. In the name of Jesus. There must be a purpose. One of us here, a member of our church, some of you know him, he has shared his testimony before. This man was seeking to leave his secular employment. Why? Because he felt he wasn't really getting the benefit of being in that place. He felt he was being cheated. And he also felt that the promises that had been made to him was not being fulfilled. So he wanted to leave. And then he called me on the phone. He said, this is what I've decided. This is what I've decided. This is what I've decided. I said, no, don't leave. I asked because I said, have you presented this matter to your boss? I've done that many times. And he keep playing me. I've done that many times. And he keep doing as if I'm not talking to a human being. So there, there's no point. He has enough staff. I want to go. I just said, I should inform you. I said, no. Have you fasted on this issue? I said, can we fast together? Three days. I want to fast with you. When I fast with you, after three days, I'll pray for you. You go and see him. And tell him what you want. He said, okay. So we fasted together for three days. After that fast, I expected him to go and see the boss. Our brother did not go. When we finished, he didn't go. Two weeks after I called him, Alpha, and actually, you know, story. I said, I know that you are still, you are not comfortable. You don't, you are not feeling free to go and see him. I said, I back you. You are fasted, you are prayed. Go and see him. Tell him what you want. And he obeyed. He did. When he went to see him and told the boss what he wanted, surprisingly to him, he didn't expect any response surprisingly the man said okay this very desire that you want this one I'll do it for you your salary I'll increase it and then I will relocate you from where you are and rent an apartment for you and this man did this thing he rented an apartment for him for I think about two years he wasn't paying rent big apartment salary was increased fasting that's what fasting does so don't don't think that problem is impossible because in God there is no impossibility it is only in humans you see impossibilities but in God there's no impossibility God is able to do anything you see that stubborn situation can become melted if you can really hold God in praying and fasting. Try it. And then you return back and share your testimony. I shared with the brethren here on Saturday night. Or Friday night, so Saturday morning in the video. I said one of the testimony will share his testimony when, when that time comes. You see, your ability to take to instruction and to do it and then your ability to apply these things you are learning and receiving it will carry you far so today i want to summarize by telling you essentials of fasting number one purpose you must have the purpose for which you want to fast and that purpose must be accepted by god then number two you should be able to pray in the scriptures pray the will of god 
pray the mind of God. Look at the word of God. Say what the Bible is saying about that situation. That is, pray in line with the written word of God concerning that situation. It's an essential in your fasting. Then number three, jack up your faith. Believe God. Faith must come in. Believe God that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You are diligently seeking him by engaging yourself in fasting because in fasting you are denying yourself. So you diligently seek this God. That's fasting. That's an essential. So purpose, pray in the will of God, pray in line with the scripture, and then pray by faith. Ensure that during the time of your fasting, ensure that you have time to read the word. You have time to pray. You have time to worship God. It is in your prayer you state what you are looking for. So don't rush back home because you want to eat. You know there are some of us when we are coming back from business or work on that day because we are very hungry. We do the prayer inside inside the bus. We pray in advance because we know now that pastor has said this that you must pray. And I know I'm already inside the bus by after six. I've not broken my fast. And by the time I get back, it's around that after seven. When am I going to have time to pray? We begin to pray inside the bus. Hallelujah. That is good. But when you still get back home, still pray that prayer. I ever short the time, still pray that prayer. Tell God, Lord, today I've decided to deny myself to seek your faith because of this issue. Please show me your mercy and answer this prayer. That's prayer. God, I worship you because you are good. On a day like this, you gave me the grace to tarry before you, to deny myself of eating. I have been fasting and now I'm about to break my fast. Oh God, this is what I'm asking you for. Help me. That's prayer. How God helps you and gives you grace. You open the scripture. You read Isaiah chapter 58. That is one chapter I know very well in the Bible that gives us the benefit of fasting. That gives us the importance of fasting. That tells you what fasting can do for you when you fast. So you open that scripture and you begin to read. You read. You get to the place that concerns you. If it is your health, it is there inside. That your health will spring forth speedily. Read it there. And then you lay hands on it and say, God, this is talking to me. And your work cannot fail. Your work cannot be broken. You say, and so shall my word be. That go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return back unto me void. But it shall accomplish that whereunto I please. And shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Say, this is your word. You want the word of God. And you say, this is, you say, by the two immutable things for which it was impossible for God to lie. When you begin to speak that way like a lawyer in the court, you are telling God, I know what belongs to me. He said, bring forth your strong reasons. Produce your court that thou might be justified. That is how to pray. That's how to break your fast. It's not rushing, woman. As you're rushing, you are going straight to the kitchen to go and put water on the fire. Water to be boiling rice. And then you are going to make him prayer. You say you are fasting. Your mind will be in that water because you are not too sure whether something is happening in the kitchen. Even if I thought it's for a few minutes, please settle it and pray that prayer. 10 minutes, pray that prayer. 15 minutes, pray that prayer. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, pray that prayer. Before you now release yourself to do whatever you are doing. You see, that period you set apart, that's part of you are very hungry. Heaven looks at you that you have connected yourself in the spirit. So heaven is saying, grant him what he's asking for. Grant her what she's asking for. And then you rise up there, you have an assurance that God has answered your prayers. It will be all over, you know that God has answered me. You yourself, you know you have fasted that day. So I believe that from today, will not do boju boju in fasting. We will not do that kind of fasting. Boju boju, olorombo, akaramo. We will not do all those things again in fasting. That is boju boju. So that the next time a pastor asks you, did you fast? Ah, I've been fasting 21 days. I've not missed anyone. And out of those, the day fasting, pastor is asking you, it was already 18 days. He said, pastor, 18 days solid fasting. And out of those 18 days, everyone see that you have only fasted one day. 
but you, you have counted 18 days. It was the only the day that the fasting fell on a Sunday like this. I was spending time to pray. You go back home, you break your fast. That's the only day that everyone recorded that you fasted. But the other days you went to work, went for business, went to school, and everything. You were not fasting. Everyone just, in fact, God Himself would say, ah, Now, why, why are you punishing yourself like this? Uh, this, this, this is not what I ordained for, for you. And meanwhile, you are ah, I'm fasting. Ah, angels, even angels are saying, We see Christian fast in the Bible. Though. We see when Esther fasted in the Bible. Though. We see when J- J- David is fasting in the Bible. Though. We see where some, someone is fasting in the Bible. But your own, where did you learn this one from? You are fasting, you are sitting down, you are watching TV because you are hungry and you are looking at time. Already it's 12 p.m. That day is a Saturday. You spend time, you are watching TV or you are, or you are pressing your phone, watching YouTube. You watch YouTube till because they say students will break by 2 o'clock. You watch YouTube till 2 o'clock. By 2 o'clock, mommy, where's my food? What have you done? YouTube is not fasting. Somebody say, I hear, sir. Look at him as a neighbor. Let's stop here for now. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. It's a, it's a warm up. We are just warming up on this important subject. Open your mouth and thank God. Thank God that you have been blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Just be thank and say, God, I'm blessed. By the word that I have received this morning, I am blessed. You have blessed me. I am grateful to you. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for how you have done it. I am so grateful to you. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him worship. Appreciate him. Just thank him. Now lift up your right hand and wave it to God in heaven and say, My Father, my Maker. Say it again. Say, My Father, my Maker. I am grateful. My understanding is enlightened. Wave that right hand and say, Oh Lord, my Father. I am thankful you have blessed me this morning. Wait for that right and say, My Father, my Maker, ah, from now, my fasting will be accepted by you. Say, Amen. We are warming up ourselves because very soon we are going to enter into our 21 days pain and fasting. You won't find it difficult because you know that you are in charge. On such days, you are in charge. You are not looking at time because you know what you are going to do on such days. Everyone will give attention to all our prayers. In advance, I'm praying for the church. Pray for us in this local assembly. That come that season, we will not be sick. We will not be weak. We will not be weary. Come that season, the Lord will grace our lives. Yeah. We shall make prayers that heaven will grant answers yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I therefore speak grace into somebody's life. The grace to fast. The grace to tarry. Somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. During this season as we are teaching, on fasting and prayer, you will not miss it. Amen. By the time we end this teaching, ah, you will even be asking for more fasting. That's how fasting is. By the time we finish teaching you these things, you will be the one to say, ah, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to be fasting in my family with my members. From now, we'll be fasting. At least one day, we will pick it. So, I prophesy that the spirit of the most high God will take over every home in this assembly. The Lord bless our lives. There's a kind of prayer you pray. The Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So I prophesy in the course of this program, by the word of God, no power shall be able to exert itself against you. Any agent that decides to try you, the Lord will turn that upon them. Ah, the heaven above us is open. The heaven is open. Businessman, businessman, hear me today. The heaven is open. Where you do not even expect any help, help will reach you. Faithful will come knocking at your door. 
helpers of destiny are locating you. I decree it in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace to walk well with God. Receive the grace to be in fellowship with God. All prayers you are rendering this week is answered in Jesus' name. As you lift up your two hands, I pray to God for you that your hand will receive the package for this week. What the enemy have been denying you of, somebody here is a testimony. This week, receive it in the name of Jesus. You are blessed and you are lifted. You are blessed and you are lifted. I'm hearing it again. There's somebody you are here. You have been expecting something. You've been expe- expecting it. And that thing has arrived this week. Receive it in Jesus' name. I'm still hearing it. I'm congratulating this person. Congratulations to this individual. That thing that you have been asking for, praying about, that thing has arrived this week. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody looking for accommodation. Somebody you have been following up that proposal of that business. Ah. God says, I just congratulate you. Somebody you have been seeking for that kind of connection you have not seen. God says, I should congratulate you. In this very week. In this very week. Starting from today, 14th of July. Listen to me. In this very week, that thing has been delivered to you. As your hand is lifted like that, receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. God bless you.